Hello and a very warm welcome to Under the Macroscope, a new podcast series from Skybound Capital in which we engage the chief strategist in the UK office, Jabir Sadawala, around his macro view of the world and various elements impacting global economies on a week-to-week basis. The podcast is available on our website for subscription, www.skyboundcapital.com. Also available on Apple, on Spotify, and on the Google podcast portal for Android. So we hope you will find uh, interest in the series and download and subscribe. It is also a precursor to Jabir's Week in Review, which comes out every Monday and which uh, we hope you will find additional interest in as well. So what a week to kick off 2021, Jabir, and obviously dominating the headlines, uh, the assessment of the American election result, the confirming of the result, and the goings-on on on Capitol Hill in Washington last week. Yeah, thank you, Matt. I mean, um, well, what a start to the year. You know, it's only been seven or eight days in and um, it's so much has happened. Um, I think actually I I take a rather different view to people who say that, you know, this is um, a real challenge to democracy. Um, I think we're beginning to see um, uh, a very strong uh, uh, endorsement to democracy here. I mean, when you look at what's happened very recently, and I bet it's come as a shock to Trump, um, he's had the most senior, most members of his own party revolt against him, uh, going right up to Vice President Mike Pence. Um, more and more Republican senators are now turning against him. And on top of that, now the latest call is for um, either his, well, his removal, either by Article 25 or uh, impeachment. Um, now, he's been impeached before, but he wasn't, um, you know, he wasn't indicted, basically. Um, this time, I think they could actually tip it over the edge. And with the inauguration about a, about a week and a half away, um, I think it makes sense. It would be the right thing for U.S. politics to, to set a precedent and have him removed if that's deemed to be the right thing by both houses. So um, it's, it, it's, it's a hell of a start, circling back to your question. Um, but I think it could be a good one. And, you know, we've seen this around the globe as well. If you look at other countries, um, people wondered for a long time uh, about Zimbabwe and eventually Mugabe had to go. It might not come quickly enough for many, and I accept that, but he did go. Um, Down in South Africa, Zuma had to go. The courts, the constitution all held up, you know, and this is a real real vote, a real testament to to, uh, the constitution, to the legal system. Of course, there will be cynics who will say that those Republicans who are turning against him, uh, it's too little too late, and uh, they're suddenly realizing which side their bread is in fact buttered. But we'll wait to see how that plays out. What it has done, though, in the last few days is to some extent uh, knock COVID-19 out of the main uh, items of news uh, on, on the mainstream bulletins. But of course, it is... Uh, a pressing reality uh, across the globe and the vaccine program another key macro theme in the world at the moment yeah absolutely and you know this all started uh, in q4 of last year in fact i was just updating some of the um uh, the news there and we now have three established players on the market uh pfizer bio BioNTech. Uh, Moderna and um, AstraZeneca, even though theirs was a little bit delayed towards the end over a couple of the tests. And also, more importantly, I mean, three, uh, three vaccines that have delivered a very high efficacy rate. Now, that's great because it means, you know, it's like the old saying, always aim high just in case you miss a bit. Um, and if you're coming in in the sort of 90 plus percent range, that's really important. I think the other significant thing here is... Um, uh, thankfully, so far at least, the two new vicious strains that we've seen, one from the UK and now surpassed by the one in South Africa, um, as aggressive as they are, um, it, they don't seem to render the, um, the existing, those three vaccines obsolete. So that's really important. And what I hope it will do is put even more pressure on the governments to try and roll these vaccines out as quickly as possible, because that's right now what's needed. Um, you're quite right. You know, COVID has um, has fallen off the radar a little bit, 
and it mustn't. I mean, we're now into a, a rather nasty third wave and um, combined with the new strains, it's spreading really quickly. This is massive discrepancies around the way different governments are handling vaccine rollout. And as if uh, there wasn't enough uh, to be thinking about in the UK, where you are based, we also cannot end this conversation without some reference to Brexit and the immediate <laughs> ramifications thereof. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, people were expecting absolute chaos at the borders. We haven't seen that yet. I mean, there has there have been issues, um, uh, particularly, you know, uh, Calais, Dover, Dunkirk and so on. Um, but from what I can tell, this is largely around not getting the right paperwork in place. Now, what that tells me is that as the learning curve improves, so too will that. Um, but I'm not hearing any issues around uh, inspection problems, the quality of goods and so on. And which is good because under the agreement, that sort of thing should not be happening. In that sense, we've got a free, you know, a, a free flow of uh, goods. Um, but Brexit, really, time will tell. You have to remember that um, in the uh, in the build up to the end of last year, and it was quite a cliffhanger, um, there was a lot of stocking up that took place on both sides. Um, and as a result, uh, it now turns out that the inventory levels will uh, will keep going for, you know, certainly another week or two. Um, so you won't have that same volume. But only time will tell on this one. But I think it will be OK. The real test will come when um, they try and thrash out a services agreement, which they're looking to do by the end of March. And that's all about the financial services sector in particular. It's a massive portion of our industry. And uh, Frankfurt and Paris are vying for as much business as possible. Um, we had a very, very stern statement from Andrew Bailey, our uh, Bank of England governor, who um, was taking no nonsense from his tone. He made it quite clear that, uh, look, we cannot um, just completely cave in to European demands. If it, if it turns out that equivalence doesn't work, then so be it, you know, but we can't give, uh, we can't give way on any more ground. So um, I think Brexit time will tell, it will unfold, but uh, overall, I don't think it's going to be the sort of Y2K scenario that was expected ago with planes popping out of the sky and all that kind of stuff. That's not going to happen. Yeah. As we said at the start, this is a macro view of the world and what a week in which to launch this series. Those three themes, definitely going to uh, be dominant ones and, and not just for the, the week coming and the week past, I think for many weeks to come, but just some quick headlines, Jabir, on, on what we can expect in your week in review, dropping on Monday, a couple of other key, uh, key subjects. Yeah, um, certainly I'm going to just sort of elaborate a little bit on uh, what Brexit has meant to both sides, um, without doubt. Um, but something which has been worrying me for a while and which started towards the end of last year um, are rising bond yields. And we've seen that in the US. I thought that it would cross 1% for the 10-year US bond yield by end of last year. It didn't simply because of the resurgence in COVID and there was a, a, a risk um, a risk off mode. Um, but look at it now. It's now at 1.07% or so. It doesn't sound a lot, but it's the pace in which it's rallied. That's what really matters. And that implies higher debt costs. So let's see how, um, how that plays out as the, as the year goes on. Um, so that's going to be one of the key things. Um, besides that, um, I'm very pleased, actually, with uh, some of the economic data that's been coming in, despite COVID. Uh, manufacturing PMIs have held up remarkably well, and many of them are well above 50, which uh, implies uh, expansion. Um, services still a bit mixed because it goes up and down like a yo-yo with, uh, you know, with the state of COVID. Um, but overall, I think it tells me that companies have adapted to this environment and they're still thrashing out the production lines. So that's good news. Well, plenty of detail and uh, plenty to mull over in Jabir's Week in Review, which is out every Monday. And we encourage you to go to Skybound Capital's website, www.skyboundcapital.com, where you can register to uh, receive this weekly podcast, which then comes out as a precursor and giving some of the headlines 
uh, of the Week in Review. And you can also subscribe to that to receive that uh, every Monday to get uh, Jabir Sadawala, our Chief Strategist's uh, view of the world, his macro view of the world in under the macro scope. So uh, until next week's podcast, cheers for now.